I'm Dr. Georges Obeid. I'm a new assistant professor at the University of Texas at Dallas Department of Bioengineering, and I've established my research program in molecular imaging and optical nanotherapeutics earlier this year. I'm going to be providing a research snippet of what we do in the lab and what we aim to aspire in terms of research as objectives in the next coming years. To introduce the group, first of all, I'd like to show you where we're at. So we're at the BSB building on the second floor on the east wing. The lab number is 12.460 if anybody uh, comes by. So first and foremost, I have a background in biochemistry and chemistry, and I trained at the Wellman Center for Photomedicine at Massachusetts General Hospital and Harvard Medical School. All of my postdoctoral training, as well as my PhD training, has been focused on the use of nanotechnology for a cancer treatment, also known as photodynamic therapy, or PDT for short. We have uh, recently been joined by Dr. Navadeep Srivastava, who's a postdoctoral research fellow. His expertise is in luminescent and magnetic nanomaterials, and we'll be working together in the team to develop novel nanomaterials that can be used as mediators for cancer treatment, uh, as I will be talking about a little bit later on in these slides. Mina Gurgis is an undergraduate student from uh, who's doing double majoring in biology and healthcare management. He works on fabricating molecular conjugates of light activatable drugs and in synthesizing some nanoparticles that we then test later on for uh, their ability to reduce tumor burdens. Chanda Bandari, Nimit Shah and Sushant Prajapati are three PhD students who have joined the group this year and will be hopefully attending uh, UT Dallas in person sometime early next year. So just to give you an overview of the research program in of itself, we combine two different concepts in order to enhance cancer therapy. The first being molecular imaging and the second being optical nanotherapeutics or light activated nanotherapeutics. And as the title suggests, our research endeavors are highly cross-disciplinary. And so we span from photochemistry to molecular biology, nanotechnology, imaging, tumor biology, all the way to immunotherapy. And because of that highly cross-disciplinary nature, we look at various different aspects uh, in our research program. The first being photodynamic therapy or light activated cancer treatment. I'll talk a little bit later on about what that is for. We also focus on precision medicine, so targeting tumors specifically to help with the safety profile of cancer treatments. We leverage nanomedicines and look into drug delivery systems. We use image guided uh, nanoparticle design to be able to produce more safe and more to well tolerated nanoconstructs for cancer treatment. Our cancer treatment in of itself is based on the idea of using combinations that are rationally designed. And so we understand the tumor biology first in order to then combine multiple treatment modalities that help improve each other. And that's the idea behind the rational cancer treatment combination design. We target cancer first and foremost. That is our primary research endeavor in the MION lab. Cancer in of itself is highly complex and the complexity ultimately uh, results in the fact that they can resist treatment, whether this be chemotherapy, small molecule inhibitors, uh, radiation therapy, or even immunotherapy. And so because of that complexity, resistance is a highly uh, problematic and frequent occurrence. Tumors in of themselves can evolve during treatment. So while they might respond to treatment first, initially, they can ultimately become resistant after. Each patient as well exhibits different responses to different treatments. And so we can't use a one size fits all approach. And so personalization for patients becomes absolutely critical. And this is where our treatment design becomes really important because we have to tailor each nanoparticle that we use to each tumor that we will be treating. And so that concept of personalization is fundamental 
to our use of molecular imaging, as well as our activatable or optical nanotherapeutics. And so because of the complexity of cancer, because of the way that it responds to treatment and the way that it varies in its response to treatment, we leverage a unique treatment modality called photodynamic therapy. And the key concept here behind photodynamic therapy is that it doesn't overlap with other treatment modalities. And so the way that it works is completely unique from chemotherapy and from radiation therapy and small molecule inhibitors, et cetera, et cetera. And so because of its uniqueness, it then has a unique feature that can be leveraged in order to circumvent some of the issues that uh, cancer typically um, experiences in the clinic. As a concept, photodynamic therapy, or PDT for short, combines the use of light activatable molecules, such as the structure that we show on the left. That's also known as a photosensitizer. That is injected typically intravenously in order for it to be systemically distributed throughout the body. Ultimately, once it accumulates in the tumor and PDT is performed, the tumor itself can be destroyed. The real important uh, facet of photodynamic therapy is that it's a highly controlled treatment modality that causes the generation of reactive molecular species. These are the species that ultimately do the damage to the tumor tissue. Because of its control in terms of the nature of it, we get highly uh, regulated treatment time. We get spatial activation. We know exactly where it is we're activating it, and we can regulate the dose of the agent itself that's being deposited in the tumor. Once you switch the light off, there's no more active, there's no more activity and the cancer treatment is no longer functional. So we have control over the entire treatment regimen in that sense. But in our group, we capitalize on nanotechnology to assist our photodynamic therapy. And these come in various different forms of nanoparticles, polymeric dendromers, liposomes, receptor targeted liposomes and direct conjugates of antibodies. These, specifically the ones that are targeted to specific patient uh, receptors, these will facilitate precision medicine for us. And that is ultimately tailoring our specific nanoparticle or our specific treatment to each individual tumor, which varies between patients. And that's facilitated for us by molecular imaging in of itself. So we use molecular imaging to design various different facets of nanoconstructs or nanoconjugates to be able to deliver photosensitizers more specifically to each individual patient and each individual tumor. In order to be able to do all of this research, we have to have a specific research infrastructure that can uphold all of these endeavors. And so in our lab, we have photoradiation setups. This specific example is a laser, set, a laser setup which activates our nanoparticles for photodynamic therapy. We also have LED setups for uh, smaller scale treatments. We have nanotechnology characterization facilities. This particular example here is a size measurement instrument that will tell us how big and what the surface charge is of our nanoconstructs that we develop. We also have chemical preparation facilities, and this is important because we not only work with uh, cells and tumor tissue, we also work with synthesizing various different components of the nanoparticles themselves, themselves and assembling them chemically also. We have spectroscopic facilities. So this here is a, an absorption spectrophotometer that helps us characterize some of the optical properties of our nanotherapeutics that we that we generate in the lab. We also have some tissue culture facilities where we can evaluate our constructs uh, in cells, specifically cancer cells um, and sometimes healthy cells as controls. And we also have an animal uh, procedure facility where we can explore some of our nanomaterials and see how they can behave and treat solid tumors in our research models. So the research areas that we are pursuing are focused on image guided nanoparticle design. That is one of the core uh, elements of the MIUN lab. We also look into image guided photodynamic therapy where we leverage imaging facilities of our nanoparticles that we generate or 
order to provide more specific, safer and effective treatments using photodynamic therapy. We also explore the ability for PDT or photodynamic therapy to modulate the immune system, as well as to modulate the tumor stroma in order to get better treatment responses. Finally, our rational combinations of photodynamic therapy and other treatment modalities such as radiation therapy are going to be explored in the context of all of these other facets that we will be researching. And so as a recap, this is the overview of the research program in the MION lab. We are highly cross-disciplinary and as such, we will be willing to accept uh, research students who want to come and help out in the lab from various different angles. What is absolutely fundamental is the ability for a student to be able to perform what we call wet chemistry or wet lab techniques, so handling of samples, handling of pipettes, etc. That's absolutely critical. But beyond that, whether it be focusing on the chemical preparation of our nanoparticles, whether it could be the bioconjugation strategies, some of the imaging that we do, uh, some of the treatment itself on either cells or animals. These are all various different uh, research directions that somebody who is in, ex, uh, interested in joining the lab can pursue. But what we do say also is because of the highly cross-disciplinary nature of our research is that flexibility is key. And so anybody that's interested in working in our group needs to be able to jump from one concept to another. And so they have to be flexible and willing to learn various different techniques and various different approaches. And because of the complexity of the kind of work that we do, typically we also expect at least a one year commitment in terms of being able to uh, remain in the lab and learn the various different skills that are necessary in order to uh, progress the research. And so thank you. I'm more than happy to uh, speak to anybody individually if they are uh, wanting to explore some of our research a little bit more or wanting to understand it a little bit better.